Greetings, adventurers. I'm Corin Fletcher, or Sir Corin, as I'm known to my friends, and I'm here reporting from the fabulous Lithia Springs Resort. No, 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 no. I'm not going to review that now. I'm going to do that another time. Today, we're going to talk about this. King Henry V sword. I received it recently from Cult of Athena, who uh, first I need to give thanks to for sending it so quickly. I actually got it four days quicker than um, I had originally anticipated, so I was really glad of that. The price on their website is uh, $300, but I got this on discount, uh, $25 off, because I got it as a blemished blade. Uh, sometimes uh, suppliers send them things that uh, aren't up to their own uh, quality control standards, and um, instead of just sending them out as new products, they uh, will offer a slight discount. This one had a spot of rust on the bottom of the guard here, it looked like somebody put their thumb on it at the manufacturer's, and a few spots of rust on the actual blade itself. They got taken care of with uh, just a little bit of um, sandpaper, so that was fine. The original of this blade is on display in Westminster Abbey, and it may or may not have belonged to Henry V, and is associated with other objects of his that he was known to have actually owned, um, such as a saddle, um, a jousting helmet, and a shield. Um, but there is some evidence that this sword may be from a later time, dating about 30, 40, 50 years after his death. But the fact is, we don't really know. Now, what can I say about this sword? Well, nothing, I guess. Well, goodbye! Wait! There is things to say about this sword. Uh, first of all, it comes in this uh, very nice scabbard that you see here. Um, it's got the steel throat and chafe, and it's covered with this uh, leather-like coating. It feels a little kind of like rubberized plastic or something. Uh, this frog that it's um, displayed with here uh, actually came from Mark and Kindle. You guys know who you are, so thanks for that. Um, it's got this really thick, meaty guard. It's about um, more than half an inch in thickness right down here. The original is actually much thinner and uh, almost wiry looking by comparison. This looks like it could take a solid hit from a two-handed sword or an axe. The handguard is um, less than four inches long, fits my hand fairly well. It has this rather oversized pommel that you see here. Um, and if I may show you, the sword is actually peened, and it's very solidly constructed, but that is the most interesting peen that I've actually ever seen on a sword. It's quite big, chunky, cross-shaped. You can perhaps see that there's not really a gap in between the blade and the guard per se. You can see that the edge is somewhat scratched up at the moment, and I'll get back to that in a second here. The blade itself is short, 27 inches from hilt to point, and that's just perfect for a warrior of my size. Um, hanging my arm down to the side, the tip will uh, just miss the uh, floor, or if I extend my arm slightly, uh, just barely touch the floor. It has a rather thick base, has this bow-shaped taper as it goes to the end, which makes it good for um, chopping. And it also has a rather pronounced central ridge, which makes it extremely stiff and rigid. I'm actually putting all my strength into it, and it's barely flexing at all. But it weighs out of the box just under three pounds. This sword is heavy. 
Now I had originally bought this with the intention of using it for sword and buckler fighting, but holding a three pound sword out like this for a great deal of time, especially when trying to do light fast motions, seemed a little much. There are actually higher quality versions of this, also sold by Cult of Athena, that uh, weigh almost three quarters of a pound less. Being said, I had already bought this as a blemished blade and was planning on sharpening it by hand anyway, and didn't mind getting the edge scratched at all. I went and sharpened it, and this is the result. Roll the clip! As you can see, it cuts through the pumpkin fairly well. And as it turns out, pumpkins, before they're cooked, are a fairly dense medium. And after doing that, I decided that the blade needed to be a little thinner. The blade on this is thick. From flat to flat, it does not have very much of a hollow grind. The original and other models I've seen have a very pronounced central ridge. So what I've decided to do is to hollow grind the edge on either side of this. So having all this in mind, what do I think of this sword? The blade is fairly good steel. It's 5160, which compares to 1060 uh, steel, and it's an alloy rather than just merely high carbon steel, so it has a few extra um, metals in it which I understand make it harder, less liable to break, and keep a sharper edge, and while at the same time being more durable. So that's pretty good. So hollow grinding the blade should retain a quality sword after I'm done rebalancing it. You could pay 250% of the price that I paid for this, or possibly even quite much more, uh, to get a higher quality blade. But being as that, uh, I paid a relatively low price, and um, the blade itself is so thick, it makes it excellent for modifications, as I've done. But being as it is so thick, this sword blade could be etched and engraved for as long as you like, and you're probably not going to be in much danger of poking through the other side. Well, that's all I have for right now, so thanks for watching. Share. Subscribe. Do it. Do it now.